Welcome back to the new Yachtsman. Today I thought I'd take you through the process of moving a, a yacht from one location to another. I'm uh, short-handed today except for my camera, camera helper. Um, I'm basically moving this boat by myself and I'm going to be uh, using a wireless yacht controller. And I'm going to take you through the process of what I'm thinking about before I leave. And we're going to do an engine room check and turn on all the electronics um, and then we'll um, leave the dock. Uh, today I also have a lot of current so if you'll notice here there's a whole bunch of current here <clears throat> so the first thing i'm considering is what order will i take these dock lines off um, so we know that the current is running this way and the, the most important line right now is this one <clears throat> this line right here is keeping this boat from being pushed back and that bow line right there is keeping the bow from being pushed over. This line is actually doing nothing. And my stern line is doing nothing. So when I leave, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to have, I can get rid of that line right now if I wanted to, and this one as well, because they're not doing anything, and then these two will be last. Okay, now we're in the engine room, and I'm just doing a check. This boat is on a thousand mile trip. I haven't been on this boat in over a year, but I am familiar with it and the, the owner has moved it and uh, down here over the last eight days and now I'm just moving it uh, to a yard from a local marina. So what am I looking for in here? I'm looking for the obvious things, you know, are there fluids leaking on the floor, oil, coolant, things like that. I'm also making sure that there's no rags or anything on top of the engines that could cause a fire. Um, also in the engine room I'm looking over toward the generators. <clears throat> so I have a generator on this side. I have another generator over here and those are basically going to replace my dock power. Right now I'm plugged in with a 50 amp cord which is like a big extension cord and the boat's running air conditioning and refrigeration and everything I need and before I leave the dock I'm going to start up one of those. All right now that I've done my engine room check I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to get um, things started and then I'm going to come back down here again. All right now we're at the uh, main helm station for this boat and um, I'm going to turn on all the electronics and the engines and everything like that. The first step <clears throat> are to turn on the navigation breakers. So I'm going to turn on the monitors, the cameras. Turning on the windlass even though I'm not going to anchor, a good safety device. So if everything went wrong and I lost power for some reason, I could drop the anchor quickly. Wipers, engine control, bow thruster, stern thruster, searchlight I don't need, trim tabs. I'm not going to be out at night so I won't need these. Autopilot, um, don't need that. Depth and speed, and horn. That's all I need for now. Now overhead, I have some instruments here. Um, my engine batteries are on, my steering pump is on, all my bilge pumps are on. My high water alarm is now on, battery alarm is now on, and I'm ready to go there. And now to start the engines, I just turn the key, and these little displays are going to come up for the engines. I'm going to give it a second. All right, it's up now. I can turn it on. Now the engines are running. All right, uh, engine controls, turn those on. So before I leave the helm, it's important you know that when I shift, it actually works. So I know the boat works. These are my thrusters. All right. So I'm not leaving this spot until I know that my engines are actually on, they actually shift, the thrusters actually move the boat. Now I'm going to go back down, do one last engine room check, and clear the deck a little bit and get ready to leave. All right, now I'm going to do a quick engine room check. It's pretty loud down there. Um, the reason I'm going down there now is that the engines are running, and if there was a water leak or coolant leak or oil leak or something, um, I'm much more likely to find it with the engines running than when the engine's off. Alright, now I'm going to
going to start a generator. I just hold the start button down and it warms itself up. And now it's running. It tells me it has 233 volts and its frequency is 60 hertz. Um, now it's very warm out today. If I was in a cold weather environment, I would let this warm up for 10 minutes, but I have very little load on the boat because everything's already cold, so I just know it's safe to switch over. So right now, I'm saying go get the power from my starboard shower, shore power cord, and now I'm going to switch over to get my power from the port side generator. So now everything on the boat works just like it did when I was connected to shore power because this generator is creating the power I need on the port generator. <clears throat> so now the next thing I need to do is bring in the shore power cord from the dock. <clears throat> All right, let's go up to the power pedestal. This is called a power pedestal, and just about any marina now has this design. And in here are your shore power connections, and there's multiple connections for different size power cords. There's fresh water supply, and um, sometimes there's cable TV connections, but really people aren't using that much anymore with Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do now, I'm on generator power, so this is really doing nothing. I'm going to turn off the breaker, and I'm going to grab this cord. Now it's real important not to drop this in salt water. Salt water is a good conductor and if you contaminate this cord it causes all kinds of sparks and it's bad. So what I do is I always keep this in my hand. I don't care if that cord falls in the water but I want this under my foot. Now this boat has what's called a cable master and most of your larger boats are going to have this and it's going to pull this cord in for me. Alright, now leaving the stock is going to be a little tricky, so I'm going to do a couple things. just freeing up this line because I want to use it for something else.
So why did I do that? So if I had somebody helping me, I could count on and was focused on helping me, I wouldn't do this. But when I'm by myself, this is a great trick I learned from an old captain. I can be on this boat and let that last line go without being off the boat. So now I can get rid of everything else, dock lines and everything, and this line will keep me from moving. This is called a wireless yacht controller. There are many different tools like it. There's ones with joysticks and different vendors. This is a good controls the engines and the thrusters and the anchor. Now to turn it on, I have a breaker for it. And I'm going to turn it on. And the most important thing about this, make sure it works. Because if you don't turn it on right and it doesn't work, it's not good. Now I've got two choices right now. Where I have to go out's down there. The current's going that way. I could back in here and turn, which I would normally do. The current's so strong right now, why fight it? If I backed in here and lost everything, the engines quit or thrusters quit, the current would take me into those boats. So there's no reason not just to back down there and then go out. That way if I lost my thrusters, I could just use the engines. So first I want to see that this line is really going to take the load. So I'm going to loosen this. See where my boat ends up. Real important too that these lines aren't in the water. They get wrapped around a propeller. It's not good. I'll secure that better after I leave. I also want to test with this thing as I walk further and further from the boat, but it still works. I've got a sailboat coming out, so I'm going to wait for him. You'll find the sailboats maneuver pretty quickly in the marina. Um, they don't have a choice. Most of them don't have a bow thruster unless they get really big. They have one propeller, and without some speed, they can't control the boat. going to go to the other side, make sure there's not another sailboat flying at me. And I'm just using my thruster to go toward that wall and away from that boat. You know, back over here. Great thing about this is I can just share where the boat is. I just go look.
Now the reason I came off the yaw controller and went to these throttles is this has no no throttle. I can't I can only run it idle with that. Whereas here, if I want to, I can push this forward and get a lot more power. So when you're in a current situation, it's good to get on these throttles as soon as you can because sometimes you'll need more power. Not very often, but um, I'm done with that for now. So I get to the other end. Now I'm going to go out in open water and I'm going to clean up my deck. If I clean up the deck, I mean I'm going to get my fenders in, I'm going to get my lines in. Uh, I don't need to do that where it's congested. I'll just get out into open water and get everything cleaned up. Okay, I've come from the upper helm station now and I'm on the yacht controller. Um, I also like to um, have this out just in case. So if something were to happen and I lost control with the yacht controller, um, I could jump on this station. I'm going to go forward where I can see better. The great thing about the yacht controller is, you know, I can go wherever I want. So I'm just going to go to this dock right here. I'm noticing the current. So if I look at that pole, I see the ripples behind it. So I know I'm going into the current. So if I stop, it's going to push me back. Alright, so I'm going to pull up so my stern is near that pole, maybe a little past it. I'm just going to pull up here. No reason to be right on the dock at this point. Um, you don't want to scrape the boat along the pilings. Alright, I'm going to go aft now. Let's work our way aft. Let's get this parallel. I'm just going to take this loop. I'm putting this line on first because the current's pushing me back. I'm just going to pull this up a little more. First lines you usually put on are spring lines because that keeps the boat from going fore to aft. Now I'm going to back the boat back up. Now I'm going to get it where I want it and set this line. That's about right. All right. Right about. Maybe a couple of feet. All right, that one's tight.
Well, I'm doing this one next because the current might push my bow out. Normally I do two spring lines. Let's get this spring line tight. If I get this one tight, I won't have to move this one again. All right, that's tight. This is tight. All right, two out of four. Now this spring line is going to go the other way. tall pole so I can't really go over it. It's always a debate whether you should put the loop on the pole, the loop on the boat. David Marlowe told me years ago, it's two o'clock in the morning, I'd adjust a line. I'd rather stay on the boat. So I generally, even though it's a little more work sometimes, see I don't have to get off the boat to do anything. If the loop was on the boat, I'd be off on the dock right now, which is a little more dangerous, right? Worst case scenario, I trip and fall, crack open this yaw controller, batteries go flying, I can go to that app station. If I was on the dock right now, I did the same thing, I'd be in trouble. I'd be trying to get on the boat, maybe it's too far away, and then I got a real mess. So my goal is to stay on the boat. Just like when we were leaving, I didn't. I left from the boat. I didn't leave from the dock. That looks good. Big boat, right? I have to push it. Let's do that. <laughs> 